This was the first mini PC that Melee sent me. I was amazed at how tiny it was, but also the fact that it still had decent connectivity on it. And this particular one is completely silent. Uh, it's got a J4125 Celeron processor in it, but the performance was actually pretty reasonable. And now they've sent me this one. Now this is much, much faster. This has got an N100 processor, which a lot of people are really happy about because the performance for an entry level processor is really good. Now I plugged this in and started updating it as you always have to do with Windows PCs. I actually thought this was also a silent mini PC. I thought it was fanless, but there is a fan in here, but that's testament to how good the fan is. It is very, very quiet. So let's go through some of the key specs. So it's a four core, four thread Intel processor, which turbos at 3.4 gigahertz. It uses Intel UHD graphics. We've got 16 gig of DDR4 RAM, which is upgradable to 32 gig. And the storage is 512 gig, but it's interesting the way they've done it, and I'll cover that a bit later. And we have three display outputs on here. So this USB-C is a display output, as well as these two HDMIs. USB-C definitely gives us the neatest option for setups. So I've got power going into this, we're using the Melee's own power adapter. And then the only cable I'm using is a USB-C cable into the monitor. And that's powering the monitor from the mini PC. And this is a touchscreen 14 inch monitor. And as you can see, everything is lovely and responsive. It's all doing everything it should do. Let's add a few more monitors to this. Here's two monitors connected and you can see I can drag over to that and I can have something on this screen but then I can also use this for anything else. So if we just call up the files, you can see all of that is working. This monitor on the left hand side is actually being powered from the mini PC. So the USB-C cable is powering the monitor and then we're using one of the HDMI ports to send video to it. You only get touch screen on one of the displays in this sort of configuration. And here's a three monitor setup. So if I just go into display settings and just set it up as it should be. So if I move this monitor down a bit, because it's a bit lower, and then what we can do is we can drag across different resolution. So these are both running at 1080. This is 720, I think, this monitor. But as you can see, dragging between the three monitors, everything's nice and swift. If we open up a few web pages, let's put it on the middle one here just so it's easier to see and just show how good the performance is. So Hot UK Deals and just open that up. You can see that comes up really quick. So I've got two tabs now. If I want the YouTube tab, I can drag that over to here. And so I've got a tab here and I've also got a tab on this side. Uh, this is the Hot UK Deals one and then I can go over to my YouTube channel, I can drag it up to maximize it. So it really means for productivity and things like that, super useful and really good that it supports these three monitors. Now power wise, this is super efficient. So this is playing a 4K video at the moment. It's not dropping any frames. Uh, the monitor is being powered by the computer. So the whole setup is currently using 16 watts of power. But as I say, that's including the monitor. So we took the monitor out of the equation, then we're using quite a lot less again. So super efficient. So let's test the web browser a bit more. Uh, so while the YouTube video is there, let's go for BBC Sport. And let's open that up. And let's go to Hot UK Deals again. I just picked these pages because there's lots of images and things on there and you just get a good idea of how the performance is with the web browser. And I, I mean, I know N100s because I've used them before and also having a decent speed storage really makes a difference as well. So you'll see on my desktop, I've labeled EMMC here. Uh, and this, I believe the configuration on this is that the drive D is the EMMC drive, which is for storage. And that's the opposite of what I've seen in another review and one thing I'd read. But uh, it, it does look like it's that way. I mean, if I go into command and type in msinfo32, it tells me we've got an eGet SSD device and we've also got a generic A3A564. So the 564 I've got on a page here is this one, which is an EMMC drive, you can see here on Orange Pi 5 Plus as well. 
So it looks like they've written the operating system to the M.2 drive, which is definitely the right way around uh, because you want the faster drive to have your operating system on it. So if I right click on this and do properties and hardware, there you go. So eGet SSD device. So M.2 drive and the EMMC drive. And I'm going to test this because I'm going to take out the M.2 drive and see if it boots. So let's shut this down. So I've taken out the four Phillips screws and the lid just comes off. There's nothing connected to this. You can see we've got some uh, grills here which is going to stop dust from getting in. And inside we've got the RAM, so upgradable to 32 gig, and the uh, M.2 drive. So if I take that one out and then carefully peel back this heat sink, yeah, we can see it's an EGET M.2 NVMe drive. So let's try and boot it up without that. And uh, you can see in here is the fan, super quiet. I still haven't heard it yet. Uh, and also this copper heatsink as well. So that's doing a really good job of keeping this cool. The casing is plastic, the lid is plastic, which is gonna be better for Wi-Fi. I have found that the Wi-Fi is very good on this little board. So let's switch it on and see if it boots. And yes, my desk looks untidy now. I can't use my normal cupboard because the kittens will go in there and it, it'll be a nightmare. So I'm up on this desk out of their way. Uh, unfortunately, it is booting Windows. So that means that Windows is installed on the EMMC drive. So the faster drive, the M.2 drive, is being used just for storage in the configuration it comes supplied in. It's nice that it comes with both options. Okay, so I've got Crystal Disk Mark here. Let's do a test on both drives. So the C drive, which is the EMMC drive. Let's do all. So that's all finished. Let's do a print screen so we can save that. Let's just minimize that so we can compare that in a minute. So this is the EMMC drive. Let's change to the M.2 drive and hit all. Oh, 10 times the speed. Okay, so much better results. So you can see read and write speeds, especially the top ones here, <laughs> 10 times the performance right across the board. It is just a much faster drive. So my advice would be to install the operating system onto the much faster M.2 drive. Now, because we have Windows installed on this already, uh, or in fact, if we go to activate, see if Windows is activated. Yeah, so it's activated with the digital license. So what that means is this device, because it's had Windows 11 on it already, and this is Windows 11 Pro, you can just install a clean install on the M.2 drive and then run it from that and use the EMMC drive as separate storage or maybe dual boot, put something like Linux or RetroPie or Chrome OS Flex on it. And then you can run your operating system on the much faster drive. So I'm downloading another game I've already got some games and emulators on here. I'm just downloading one more game. But while we're doing that, let's have a look at Amazon and see what they say about the specs. So Bluetooth 5.1, dual band Wi-Fi, smart fan design, higher thermal conductivity, copper tube air-cooled heat dissipation. It is very effective. I can just about hear the fan if it's really quiet in here, uh, but it is on a wooden surface right next to me. So gigabit ethernet as well. This picture is another monitor setup, which is where your monitor can power the PC. My monitors can't do that, but if you've got a monitor that offers power supply from the monitor, then you can do that as well. So again, super neat setup. Nice little view of the internals and all the drives and everything. And as it says, easy to hold in your hand. I mean, you could travel with this, it is super light. So we've got some BIOS features here that support auto power on, wake on LAN, network boot, USB boot, RTC wake, boot order. And obviously you can mount this on the back of a monitor. It does come with a very slim metal bracket. So very, very neat on the back of a monitor. Talks about the low wattage. And here's all of the specs on the connections. So two USB 3.2, so two 10 gig sockets. They're colored blue. Then we've got a USB 2 socket. The USB-C I was using for the display here. Data transfer, video display, USB PD 3.0. We've got a three and a half mil audio jack, which is microphone and headphones, micro SD slot, 
a couple of HDMI 2.0, which is capable of 4K 60 hertz. This USB-C is just for power, a gigabit ethernet. So there's a question here, do I need to reinstall Windows 11 if I upgrade to an SSD with one terabyte or more? And it says, enjoy the convenience of pre installed Windows 11 Pro on the spacious EMMC drive, but easily switch to faster booting on the SSD by reinstalling the operating system. So as I was mentioning before, really. So here's Fortnite. It's asked me if I want to apply the best settings, so I'm going to say yes to that. Okay, there's quite a bit of slowdown on this bit. It's a bit laggy. So we can drop the resolution to 720. Okay, so it looks softer, but yeah, it's way better. Right, there was some stuff over here, wasn't there? Oh, come on. I probably put it, should have done the shield before I did this. Oh, well, I got a kill anyway. Let's see how well it copes with the cars. Yeah, it feels all right. Is that someone down there? Yeah, it is. That's another kill. Hover jets. Go on then. Oh, wow. Oh, they're cool. I haven't seen those before. And I just realized I didn't have FPS on, so I've just turned that on. I was too busy enjoying the game. Right, I've got to get moving. Okay, so it drops down to 30 FPS on these bits. Oh, look. Can we? Oh, that's a good weapon. Playing around with the settings, maybe you can get even better than that, but that was actually quite playable. I was happy with that. So this is Dirt Rally on default settings. Okay, it looks pretty decent at 1080. Nice and crisp. And what we're looking at, 35 FPS. Certainly feels fine. Feels nice and responsive. Obviously I could lower the resolution and try and get more FPS, but this is perfectly playable, although, oh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy enough with that. So I've got this first Templar, which was free on GOG recently. So let's see what that's like. I think it's an older game, so it should be easy enough to play. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be slowing down, seems to be coping with that pretty well. Yeah, it's coping with that fine. Okay, so PlayStation 2 emulator PC SX2. So this is at two times resolution, and as you can see, it looks good. Uh, it looks lovely and crisp. It's smooth. It's not struggling at all with it. A constant 60 FPS, which I'm happy to see. Yeah, excellent. And I did have trouble running this on an ARM device, so yeah, it's really nice to see that running so well on this M100. Let's try a bit of Witcher 3. So I've got everything about as low as it will go. I'm on the low preset. So let's go back in and See how that looks. Okay, yeah, you can see it's a bit laggy. I haven't got FPS on here, but you don't need that on to know that it's struggling with that. I mean, it's it's an ambitious game to try and play on uh, integrated graphics, but the fact that it's running it at all is somewhat impressive. But yeah, it's it's a bit of a step too far for this processor. Let's have a look at what we can change in the BIOS and also the boot menu. So let's shut that down. And pressing delete on startup gets you this. Uh, and so it looks like we have lots of control here. Yeah, everything is configurable, like CPU configuration, virtualization, chipset, all the boot options are enabled. Good to see the BIOS is so configurable.
So pressing F7 gets you the boot menu. You can see at the moment it's only given me the option of booting from the EMMC drive. I think I've got Batacera on this USB stick. I'm not sure if it will detect it after I've booted. So let's see what happens if it shows up. Now I probably have to reboot. So if I do Control Alt Delete and then hit F7 on boot. Yeah, so we've got the Samsung flash drive. Batacera is loading. I'm going to plug in my USB joystick for this so I don't have to do any configuration. Yeah, and just loads up straight away. I mean, as expected, the M100 has been out a little while now, but it's very popular, especially in retro gaming. So I've already done a bit of PS2. So I've got OutRun on PSP. Yeah, as you can see, no problem at all with PlayStation Portable games. That's running lovely and fast. Let's do a little slide around the corner. And if we quit out of that, and you can see I've got various other systems on here, but we're going to be all right, right up to PS2 and Wii and GameCube emulation, no problem at all on the M100. See, I've got Dreamcast here as well, which does look very nice. And as you can see, no problem with Dreamcast at all, working exactly as it should be. Yeah, very nice. So really impressed with this latest one from Melee. It is super small, really well designed, great connectivity on it. The only thing for me is the fact that the OS is installed on the EMMC drive, not the M.2 drive. Uh, I would definitely change that, but uh, everything else is really, really good. Super quiet in operation, and the Wi-Fi works really well. Yeah, very impressed. So thanks very much to Melee for sending me this to test. I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.